thanks for stopping by at Twisted Art Designs. We're going to work in the My Favorite Things journal today. We're getting down to the end of the book and one thing I haven't included is my favorite type of music. Um, my favorite band and my favorite artist and I think I'm going to combine them in this two page spread instead of doing two separate pages. So what I'm going to do first is get started and put down a base layer of acrylic paint and then build up from there. And I'm going to use this image. U2 is my favorite band and this is the front cover of um, an Arizona Republic article from the rep from 20 years ago when they were in concert here. So I'm going to use that to uh, Mod Podge down onto this side and then work on the other side. And I think I'm going to put words in the middle. So let's get started and see what I can create. I started with a base color of yellow in acrylic and I kind of dry brushed it so it would be a little bit marbled looking instead of solid. That's just my preference. And I had an idea for putting song lyrics from... Um, my favorite song that's U2 and my favorite song um, Pink is the artist that I'm going to go with. So I had an idea of using song lyrics in continuous writing for the backgrounds for both of my pages. So I'm using a Sharpie because it's permanent and um, when I put something over it like matte gel medium or anything like that, any type of medium, it's not going to smear. You don't want to use um, like a Posca pen or anything that is reactivated with wet mediums because then your words will all smear unless that's the look you're going for. So continuous writing is to just connect all the words together, not lifting your pen, just writing continuously back and forth. So I'm just going to get started and start putting down the lyrics to my favorite YouTube song. And when I get to the end of that line, I'm going to turn my page. and then turn it again when you get to the end. So here's what it looks like and I really enjoy it as a background. It's readable but yet it's not. It just makes interest so it's kind of cool. And what I want to do is put the word band going this way and the word artist going this way. That's why I left kind of a little bit of a space here and I don't care if my letters overlap my background because there's going to be a lot that actually covers this but I just thought that was a great way to get started for a music page. So next I'm going to use my paper that's from uh, 2001 and I'm going to um, tear out this image of the band members and then for this U2 down here I want to use that as my title and so I'm going to punch that out but on things that are thin here's a trick if you have paper that's thin, like tissue paper or even some papers that you um, get that are for the purpose of art journaling, some of it's really thin and if you try to use a punch, the punch will just tear the paper. It won't cut it out in a nice way. So the trick to that is to back it with another piece of paper or cardstock before you punch and then it gives you just some stability in that paper and it'll make it punch out nice and clean. And I always use my punch upside down so I can see what I'm punching. So see how that just, even though this was 
thin newspaper, it punched it out in a really nice circle. And I used a one inch circle, and then I'm going to use a one and an eighth circle in another color to kind of make a little mat for that so that it stands out. I tore out my image, and now I'm going to use matte gel medium to put it down onto the page. And, you know, mine was a newspaper article, and you may not have something like that, but for your favorite band, you could always go on the internet and find a photograph and print it out and uh, use a printed image of whoever your favorite band is. So that's just a suggestion. I've held on to this newspaper article for obviously 20 years and I'm glad I did because it's going to be so cool in my favorite things book. Okay, so I put some on the back carefully, which is not easy. It rolled up, and I put some on the page, too. That kind of helps it from um, keeping the wrinkling down. And then just smooth it as you put it on. Might still wrinkle, but that's okay. I'm going to try my best to get it nice and smooth. On this side, I printed out a picture of pink from the internet. I just printed it on a regular paper from my inkjet printer. And I used a piece of scrap cardstock. It's textured. And I made a frame that's a little bit bigger than the picture, just using my paper cutter, and I made it wide on one side, because what I want to do is put this frame over the picture and have the picture tip out to one edge, kind of like this. So that's how I want the picture in the frame. Now I just use a couple little pieces of scotch tape to hold it in place the way I want it. And I'm going to put that, I think, right about here on my page. So I'm going to go ahead and use Art Glitter Glue, since that's a frame, and a little bit of matte gel medium behind her and get that all stuck down and into place. But before I do that, I'm going to take some Distress Ink by Tim Holtz, the Victorian Velvet, and I'm going to go around the edge of this frame so that I can kind of... Um, pick up a little bit of that neat texture on the cardstock and just add some interest to this frame. And I have these glittery puffy letters. They're from my scrapbooking days and they're going to be just absolutely perfect for putting the title of pink on here. Oh, I love it. It's, it couldn't be better if I tried. I'm not one to really like store-bought scrapbooking stuff in my art journals, but these are perfect for this layout. So, I'm going to use them. That's going to be super cute. Because the song that I have in the background is Glitter in the Air, so these glitter letters are just perfect. Oh my gosh, so cute. So stinking cute. So, there's the word pink on her frame. And then on this page, I printed this out. It's a handful of glitter, and that's a um, part of the song. So I'm going to tear that out, and I'm going to incorporate that into this layout as well. So while that dries, I went ahead and cut out my circle. I used some really interesting um, paper that I had that is metallic with swirls. And I did a the circle a size bigger, offset it, and then I cut out a hexagon with a punch out of cardstock I had that is also textured. It's got lines, and it just makes that really pop. I mean, that came out of the newspaper, and it was kind of faded, but now it looks kind of nifty. And that's what I'm going to put right here to put the title on this page, or the name of the band on this page. Next I'm going to take an old card and some white gesso, and I'm going to just pick up some gesso with my card, and I'm going to just scrape it across the page. 
what I'm wanting to do is just kind of blend in those papers and I'm going to use my finger to I want it to be textured and interesting I want to still be able to see the words in the back but I'm just kind of pushing that to the back a little bit and I'm not going to do it a lot because I really like seeing that the words but just a little bit I'm going to use my finger to go around the newspaper edge to really blend it in. This is something I learned from a class I took by uh, Pia Rahm. She's a really fabulous artist and she does this a lot to tie in the elements in her background to like show that background still through the gesso but tie in those elements that you put down that you collage and add to your page and using your finger just works really really well for this and the card. The card makes more of a texture design, more grungy. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Now I'm going to take some sandpaper and just carefully in some spots sand my image. That newspaper is very fragile so it doesn't take but a very light touch to grunge it up. This just gives it just a little more element of interest. I love the way sanded paper looks. And I'm going to sand just a little bit up here too. Just to sand back that gesso in some spots. I don't want to sand away my words. And over here too on this paper, paper, any kind of paper, you can just stress with sandpaper. Just gives it a little more grunge element to it. Makes it not so perfect. And I'm going to wipe off that sand, sanded paper, wipe it off a little bit so it's not powdery. And I'm going to use a 8 millimeter Posca with a chisel tip. Nice fat chisel tip. And I'm going to go around and make a really nice black border all the way around to tie these two pages together. And the, having a big fat chisel tip Posca makes that so easy. You can just easily come in here and put in your border. So I'm going to do that all the way around and then I'll show you what it looks like. So I'm using Arteza metallic watercolor paint and a watercolor brush and I'm just 
adding a nice light soft wash of metallic blue over the background. The color is Sky Blue A716 Arteza Metallics. And I'm just doing a light wash, nothing fancy, but the metallic will dry and I think it'll just add a little something something. The last thing I'm going to add is just a touch of pink varnish, I mean a touch of pink glitter and I'm using varnish over this area where the person is throwing glitter in the air. And I Varnish will dry clear and the, var the glitter will stick nicely to it. And so I'm just going to sprinkle on some pretty pink glitter. So the last thing I did was to use this Tim Holtz stamp the, or um, stencil. This is the gradient dots and a cosmetic sponge and some black paint. And I just added some texture over that background just to add a little element of something so it wasn't too plain. And I'm super happy with how it turned out. So there's my pages for my favorite band, favorite artist, for the type of music that I like. I love that the song lyrics are on the backgrounds so that it gives energy to the page because art journaling is basically capturing your feelings and emotions and those two songs are songs that resonate with me and so having those words in the background, you can't specifically read them, but I know that they're there and I just love how it makes the pages feel. So hope you enjoyed this and it gave you some ideas because coming up with an idea for how to put your favorite band or artist, music artist on a page is not so easy in our My Favorite Things book. So hopefully this gave you some food for thought and some ideas. Now I can't wait to see what you guys create. So go play and do your pages and post them in the Facebook group and show me what you did. So go make art because art soothes the heart. Mm -hmm.